the format of being robot. On August 18, 2001, an ending of Little Bear with the Nick Jr. logo goes way too far after a report of someone who watched it ended up dying on the spot. The rumor turned out to be a hoax, or so I'd thought. I'm, what you call, a logo designer. I design logos for companies in need of a logo. My credits are Gravitas Ventures, Uncorked Entertainment, Cinemapocalypse, IFC Midnight, Breaking Glass Pictures, and the most recent is the Shutter logo. Had a pretty decent lineup in my belt, felt pretty glad of myself, that is, until 2004 hit. It all started in the middle of winter. I was finishing touches on my project for college when a knock was heard at my dorm door. I approached and opened the door. It was the dean and my 3D modeling professor, Professor Blastisov. They came to tell me that someone dropped a VHS tape and asked if it belongs to anyone. I looked around and said no, but I also asked if I could take a look. The two nodded as they handed over the tape. I plugged in a VCR I packed in my closet, plugged into a CRT TV and turned it on, got it working. I was about to insert the tape in, when I saw a note poking out of the VCR's tray, so I pulled it and read it. It was a small note. Don't view what you'll see. You'll soon regret it. Ominous, I inserted the tape in and that's when the tape started, without any warning. It started with the normal average end credits to Little Bear, nothing much to see so I fast forward them a bit and then stopped at the logo. I noticed something off. Nick in the Nick Jr. logo was mirrored, so the logo was now Xin, and the perspective made it look like Nick was staring at Jr. Backwards music slowly started playing after Little Bear stopped. At the 26 mark, Junior spoke. He said. What is stronger? Suddenly, Nick started growing more unnatural as more text was shown. Than the human heart. When I decoded the words, my eyes widened. Eat. Nick grew more bigger and another piece of text was shown. Which shatters over and over. Suddenly, the background turned black as the last piece of text was shown before cutting to black and still lives. Eat or die. The screen slowly faded to an ominous standing figure of Nick and a distraught Junior looking in, supposedly, horror. I let out a scream as it suddenly showed Nick's face at Junior. It was red and twisted with static as the only phrase shown was, me. I even saw Junior's face turn into a black void and scream before it snapped to black. I didn't even care to know what happened next, I took out the tape. Then, I immediately shut off the VCR and threw the tape out the window. Whose idea was it to send someone a VHS tape? Who made this? Who did it? Weeks later, I received news that one of the students went missing after seeing the tape themselves. I'm at a loss on what to do, I tried contacting Nick Jr. but they haven't responded to me in months and they wouldn't especially like having angry visitors over. So I asked my 3D modeling professor, Glasness of I went to his classroom with the tape in my hands and asked him to view the tape himself and explain to me what's going on. He glanced over and inserted the tape into his own VCR player and played it. After a minute of watching it, Glasdeso pulled me to the side and explained something surprising. He was a retired broadcaster for Nick Jr. himself. Wow, I didn't know he was a broadcaster himself. He explained something more surprising though, the one responsible for airing the tape was my roommate himself. Accordingly, he felt like Nick Jr. wasn't edgy for his taste, so he tried to make an edgy bumper for the company. They rejected it because it was too dark for kids. To this day, only a YouTube video uploaded by Sismo is the only known source of the bumper. It's called, Nick Jr. Anomaly, 2001, found footage.